God has a special plan and a purpose for us. We need to understand when we open the scriptures and read the scriptures, God speaks to us. God is going to show up. Unexpectedly, God is going to show up and be able to minister to you. My name is Shirley McLaurin. My name is Michelle. My name is Samantha. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic online service. The Lord is going to do a miracle in you and it is possible to see the light again. Please check us out on social media. We put together a great service for you. Creator put a system in place. The system that we call is called a prayer. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer changes things. God is anxiously waiting upon you to come. Today, 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 God is wanting to remember you. God sees what is in our hearts and minds. God sees the things that matters to him. God sees the heart. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic Today service. My name is Shirley McLaurin and it is my privilege to welcome you all. We have family and friends watching this program from all over the world. We are very delighted that you are able to join us today. I trust this program will bring you hope, encouragement and blessings to you and your family. Please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you. Scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 21, as well as verse 38 to 39. If you have a Bible, please read along with me. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children for all who are far off, 
for all whom the Lord our God will call. May the Lord add his blessing to this word. Hey, this is David. I'm so glad you're able to join us today. Special welcome if you are just tuning in because we have a special word from the scriptures and God has a special insight for you. I hope you will take time to, to, to just take a sit down and maybe you wanted to uh, grab a pen and a paper, uh, take this link and send it to your family and friends and we look forward to connecting. And we also enjoy that you are here every week. We are here every weekend to bringing God's word and uh, we are so excited and because we take very seriously we are very excited and delighted because uh, we are able to connect with you because we have some good news to share because we all often bring the good news we always it brings hope to our lives I recognize that we are going through difficult challenging times all over the world we're just coming out of this pandemic and that uh, we always wonder if there is anything more or we wonder if there's any new mutations or new uh, variants. But the thing is, the Bible says we are uh, safe in the hands of God. We are, God is taking over or watching over our lives. And we are so delighted that you can able to connect with us here. One thing is based on the scriptures, God is sovereign and he's also in control. No matter what we are going through, no matter what we are experiencing, we can always be safe and secure are protected in the hands of God. And again, today we're going to talk about a sermon that Peter's first sermon. And again, many of you have been writing to us. We wanted to say thank you. We are uh, I sincerely express our gratitude to you for taking time to write to us. And again, I invite you to check out our website, mosaictoday.org, mosaictoday.org. You get to read the profiles. You get to participate with the uh, it's interactive. You get to write emails to us. You may also want to catch up on uh, some missed programs and you can also watch some previous episodes. And further to that, you can also connect with us so that you can become one of the partners because we take that gospel seriously because we believe that God is in the business of changing lives. We believe that God is in the business of transforming lives. And we have the good news because God has entrusted this very special, unique task to us. God has given this great commission to us and we are taking it seriously and together we can take the gospel to the nations because our scope is wide and we wanted to partner with you. Again, many of you have been partnering with us. We want to say thank you. Please continue to, to, to pray with us and also see how God can use our lives because uh, the scriptures is very interesting because when Jesus was on this earth, he performed a lot of miracles. And one time he was teaching and preaching, explaining about the kingdom of God, healing uh, many sick people. And at one time there were about 5,000, perhaps I would say 10,000, because later on it was counted only 5,000 men. And again, it was so late and they were looking uh, to, to serve lunch and apparently there was not any uh, close by McDonald's or anything like that available. So there were only five loaves of bread and two pieces a fish and Jesus prayed and miraculously 5,000 people were fed here's my point whatever you may have however it may be how small it may be but if we were to bring into the presence of God if we were to bring to the Lord Jesus Christ he would take it and use it and multiply it and so that it will be a blessing to many people. Thank you for writing to us. We enjoy listening uh, from you. And again, thank you for connecting. We are here every week for you and your family to empower you, to encourage you, to, to build you up, to cheer for you because we believe that Christian walk is not just a hundred meters dash. Christian walk is not just a solo walk. Christian walk is not something that you do on your own. Rather, we are all in this together. We are all in this together need to grow and mature because God has a very special task. A special job description has been assigned to each one of us. 
And again, if we would discover that purpose and we would have joy in this life to fulfilling because God desires to partner with us. God desires to partner with us. When, when you talk about the word partnership, when God decides to say something or to give a project to us, he expects us to do certain things. If we were to do these certain things and God would do his part, so together we can make this happen. Because we are sincerely, we are working hard, we are taking this seriously and doing our part and expecting God to do his part. Many of you have been writing because they've been building up. And again, our desire is to build you up. Our desire is to cheer for you. And today we want to talk about how the power of the gospel can change lives. And the title I gave my talk today is called God's Kingdom Project. It's God's Kingdom Project. And today happens to be the first sermon of Peter. Today is Peter's first sermon. I don't know what you think about when you think about Peter, but let me give you some thoughts here. Public speaking is very interesting faculty. Or public speaking is very a very unique craft. Public speaking is not easy. It's not for everyone. If you were to talk to your pastor, if you were to go talk to your minister, ask them to share with you their experience of their first sermon. Usually when you're in front of people, especially when you're in front of people giving a presentation or giving a talk or giving an exposition of, on a topic, people usually get nervous. People get scared. It's, it's, it's a shaking. Sometimes the words get stuck you. You're unable to speak because especially I remember, I remember the first time when I spoke, I got up and I started to speak and certainly I enjoy doing this. The first sermon I preached was when I was 15 years old. Did you get that? When I was 15 years old kid, I was growing up and I had an opportunity to get up and speak and lo and behold, I stood up and, and I gave my presentation. I agree, it was not a perfect one, but again, Here's a point. God takes the skills that he has given to us. God takes your temperaments. God takes your personalities. And if we were to use this for the kingdom purpose, we would see a big, huge difference. Preaching is an art. We need to practice that art on a regular basis so that we can, we can perfect this. Preaching practice helps us to perfect it. Preachers can be good teachers, but the teachers can be good preachers. So again, the world is looking for some good preachers. The world is looking for some good expositors. So we are, I'm calling up a generation of young men. I'm calling up a generation of young women who could take their life seriously and read the Bible and to, to, to get some formal education and become the expositors, become the preachers of the word. Because in every generation, we have to raise up young men and women who can able to stand in the gap and who can able to preach the word and to be able to become relevant into our times. And my goal, my challenge for all of us is that as we study this first sermon of Peter, and it gives us an insight because the Bible gives us an insight because how Peter helps us to grow, how Peter's talk helps us to focus on the things that we need to be very important in the scriptures. In the book of Acts chapter 2, in the book of Acts chapter 2, Jesus gives a very, very specific instructions. This is just before the Pentecost. Just before the Pentecost, Jesus gives a very specific instructions to his disciples and say, the instruction is to wait. The instruction is to wake up. The instruction is to witness. So as, as we wait upon the Lord, Jesus is instructing his disciples. Jesus is giving this recommendation to his disciples that they ought to wait for the Spirit of God to come upon them. This is a very interesting topic. In fact, we feel so uh, connected. We feel so talented. We wanted to go out and do the things right away. But sometimes God says to us, pause. God says, 
that we wa he wants us to wait upon the Lord. In fact, in this generation, somehow we have never learned to wait. And today I'm challenging you. Today I'm in giving you a, an option. Today I'm, I'm re reminding you from the scripture, whatever you are doing, sometimes God's word to us is to wait upon the Lord. When you wait upon the Lord, you're not wasting your time. When you wait upon the Lord, you are preparing yourself. When you wait upon the Lord, you're always alert. You're always trying to work together so that you're able to, 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 to follow the orders when the orders were given. The time comes when we need to wait upon the Lord. And Jesus gives this very specific instruction to his disciples, to his followers and say, you wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. I wanted to share two phases. The, in the first phase, we would see before the Pentecost, disciples were scared. Before the Pentecost, people were afraid. Disciples were, were, were scared and they were hidden. They were quiet. They, they were uh, in secret. They were uh, at an unknown, undisclosed location. They were at a, a different different location, they were afraid of their lives. That was the experience before Pentecost. The first sermon of the Peter was recorded for us in the book of Acts chapter two. There were two phases, phase one, disciples and the followers of Jesus were scared, afraid of their lives, and they were hidden, they were just quiet, they were had a very low key experience. In phase two, we saw after the Pentecost, disciples became bold. They were courageous. They were out in public. They were uh, testifying. They were giving testimonies of what they had seen and experienced. Apostle Peter is also known as Simon Peter, one of the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. Perhaps he was one of the closest disciples of the Lord. After the resurrection, Peter became one of the most influential Christian leaders of the church. His occupation was he was a fisherman. Jesus said to Peter, I will build my church upon you. He was a gifted teacher or a preacher, a courageous leader. Probably Peter had many firsthand experiences because he was hanging out with Jesus. When Jesus was traveling, he was traveling with Jesus. When Jesus, when Jesus was ministering, he was with Jesus. When Jesus was healing, he was right there with Jesus and seeing and experiencing all these miracles for the very first time. For the very first time. It was a very interesting because when Peter was decided, when before Jesus called him, he was a fisherman. He was, he, he was, he, he grew up on the uh, Sea of Galilee. That was his occupation. That was his trade. And Jesus said to him, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Jesus made that call. Come follow the person of Christ. Then Jesus said, I'll make you the fishers of men. Even today, Jesus is still making the same call. He's calling out men and women who can able to come and seek the kingdom within their lives. And he wanted to make them fishers of men. Fishers of women. Actually, the Bible gives us the handbook of the New Testament disciples. If you were to read how the church began, if you were to read how disciples, how the apostles were able to minister, were able to do the work of the kingdom, we would see in the book of Acts. If you were to take the book of Acts and try to complete it on a one weekend, you get a first-hand experience how God worked in and through these disciples. And we saw how God could able to, to, to bring out the best in their lives. For many of us, we would know that Peter was the same Peter who denied Christ before crucifixion and refused to be identified as a follower of Christ. Peter was known to be the very impulsive one. Peter is the same one who was tries, tried his best to walk on the water and Jesus lifted him up, Jesus picked him up. And what a interesting aspect of that. 
Peter was a man of the message. He always had the opportunities. Every time he had an opportunity, he started to speak. He started to witness. He started to proclaim. Because when opportunities come as Christians, we are always ought to be ready to present the reason, the hope that is within us. And again, God gives us so many opportunities to all of us all the time. You go to school, you will have many opportunities. You go to workplace, you still have many opportunities. You go to the marketplace, you still have many opportunities. If people ask you, what do you do? What is the hope? What is the secret? And disciples, the followers, the believers will say, we know the difference because we trust or we put our faith in the person of Jesus Christ. So... On the first sermon of Peter, he was explaining and he was giving an overview of this whole gospel story. He was giving an overview of the gospel story. He makes the reference to prophet Joel. In the book of Joel, we would see it was written in 586 BC, 586 BC, the day of the Lord is coming. Rather, the theme was God's intervention. The theme was God's judgment. The theme was on talking about the repentance. The repentance. The jewel says, in the book of Joel, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Men and women for all generations would prophesy, would see the dreams and have the visions. Young men and women, young and old will see the visions and the dreams. Across the ages, male and female servants will see the visions and the outpouring of the Spirit. And the point of this, the prophecy, where Peter tries to connect in this talk is that he talks about whoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved. Here is a blank statement. Here is a blank invitation. Here is what he's saying. Whoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved. It doesn't depend upon our works. It doesn't depend upon our performance. It doesn't depend upon what we bring to the table. It depend upon how skilled we are, how educated we are, how professional we are. But if we were to come and if we were to respond, uh, if whoever calls the name of the Lord will be saved. If you were to call the name of the Lord, the Lord desires to save. Even today, the Lord wanted to save each one of us. The invitation is still open. The classic verse from the scriptures, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, whoever believes should not perish but have eternal life. God wanted to protect our lives. God wanted to give eternal life to us because if we choose to respond to his word, if we choose to, to accept and believe on that word, it is interesting. Visions and dreams are still happening. It not just happened in many, many thousands of years ago. Rather, it is still happening today because I see and meet people from all continents and especially from the Middle Eastern countries. Many people would come up to me and say, I saw Jesus in my dream. I had a vision of Jesus come into my room. And we heard the stories of Sadhu Sundar Singh. We heard the stories of Bhakti Singh. And these men literally have seen the person of Jesus. It was interesting just not too long ago. There was a Syrian camp, refugee camp, and in the tent there was this a person showed up at the entrance of the tent and he said, I will send you a messenger. And he said, I am Jesus. And then this person got disappeared. And after a few days, a man showed up and said, I've been advised to come here and to be able to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And even today, many people will proclaim, many people will profess that they've seen the person of Jesus. Even today, in 2021, it is possible. And in the scriptures, Bible says, God shows up to people. God still reveals himself. The nature and the core of his being is, he's a relational God. He's interested to build relationship with each one of us. He not only is a relational God, but he's also a revealing God. He desires to reveal himself to us. And especially if you were to seek the Lord, the Bible says we will find him. We will discover him. 
It is possible. If you've been looking for God, if we've been looking for, for, for God to respond, ask Jesus to show up and he will show up. That is a word because I still hear, I still hear the testimonies of people who, who pray to God earnestly and Jesus shows up. It is true, joy Jesus shows up. What a privilege it is to see the person of Jesus Christ. It is still relevant. God still speaks to us. God still is relevant to our times and he's interested in our lives. You matter to God. Do you know this morning when you woke up, the Lord was thinking about you. You know, when you woke up this morning, the Lord was thinking about you and is thinking that he has a great potential and he wanted to give you hope. He wanted to give you future. And he longs to connect with each one of us. He is longing perhaps we can come close to him and to respond to his call. And the Bible says, whoever calls upon him, whoever calls upon him on any continent, on any, uh, on any country, on any city, on no matter what language is that you speak, God is still inviting people to himself. And what a joy it is to proclaim because Peter was explaining. Peter was giving this invitation. Whoever would call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And there's a process that needs to take place. And if you were to take close at the Peter sermon, there are some points that we need to do in a proper way. There are certain things that we need to do in a proper protocol. And we need to do things in a proper setting. I will explain as we try to speak, as we try to move forward. The P Peter was giving his sermon and he was saying that you ought to do certain things in order to be saved. You got to do certain things in a priority wise. You got to do certain things in a special way so we can able to follow and to experience God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness. Bhakti Singh was a great man of God. He was serving the Lord. He was depend up, depending upon the Lord every day. And God was leading him. He was, God was directing his path. God was directing his schedules. God was directing his everyday affairs. And one day Bhakti Singh decided to travel from Mumbai to, to north, like near Kashmir area. In, in the Indian subcontinent. And while he was there, he, he was able to preach to many people. And then the next day he was supposed to go to Mumbai, the big city in Indian subcontinent. And that day, that night, as he was in uh, the Jammu Kashmir area, everything got snowed in like there was absolutely no way people can travel. A lot of snow, no, no traffic, no trains, no buses, nothing would fly, nothing was happening. And Bhakti Singh just got up. He had his breakfast, had a cup of tea, and he was so excited and he packed his bags. And the, one of the waiters looked at this guy and said, so what are you doing? I said, I'm going to Mumbai. He said, how are you going to Mumbai? Everything is stopped, nothing is moving. I said, no, I'm going to Mumbai. He packed his bags. He checked out his room and came to the lobby and he was waiting as if a cab is going to show up. He was waiting as if there will be somebody going to come and pick him up. It is so happened as he was waiting, ready to travel, ready to go with his bags. The premier of that state was in the same hotel having his, his breakfast. And after the breakfast, the premier, he was or like a chief minister. He was going back to Mumbai. He looked at Mr. Bhakti Singh and said, Sir, would you need a ride? I'm going to Mumbai. And it's so interesting. So Bhakti Singh got a free ride to Mumbai. It's miraculous workers, miracles were happening every day. Life itself is a big miracle. If you were to recognize that, because we have a life that God has given to us, we would see miracles on an everyday basis. We would see God showing up at every place. And we see God was still showing up. God was revealing himself through visions and dreams and in person, actually. And it is so happened when, when, when Peter was preaching his sermon, he had several occasions where Jesus was ministering to people. He was right there. He saw and experienced the firsthand experiences. 
And Peter says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And G Peter could have said, go home and pray, but he never said that. He never said, go home and pray that you'll be saved. Peter never said, come join a group and we'll read the Old Testament from cover to cover. He did not say that. Or he, Peter did not say, meet us at the temple every morning so that we'll all pray together. He did not say that. Peter did not say, give, to, give money to the poor so you will be saved. He did not say that. It is interesting. He said he gave very specific things. He gave some very specific instructions to his disciples, to followers, and to be able to understand and to be able to save. The first command or the first principle that Peter gives to the people was that the first response was that repent. The word repent is such a powerful word. Repenting from what? Repenting meaning turning away from world and turning towards God. It is like a, uh, like a turning around, like, like a, if you turn 180 degrees, if you're going this way, you turn slowly and going this way. That's what it means, the repentance meaning. If you're going towards one direction, Repenting meaning turning around and going towards another direction. That's what it means. The word repentant, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. First, they need to repent. Repenting meaning turning to God. The second word Peter gives to us is that the word believe. We all need to believe. Believe in what? The Bible says that God sent his son Jesus. So we all need to believe that God sent his son Jesus. And he died for us on the cross. He paid our price on the cross. And he brought forgiveness. And he brought redemption. And if we were to grab that one, I'm sure we would experience God's true repentance. Repent, Peter says. Believe, Peter says, and then be baptized. The word baptized is so crucial, was so important. Baptism meaning the public declaration that you are the follower of Jesus. It's a public declaration that you are the, 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 the disciple of Jesus Christ. There are no secret believers. There are no secret believe, uh, Christians that we all need to make a public declaration. A public declaration is what it is, the baptism meaning. Why we need to believe in baptism? Because the scripture commands us to take baptism. Scriptures recommend us to take baptism. Peter is suggesting that we need to take baptism because Jesus has taken baptism. Jesus received baptism and Jesus models baptism for us. If Jesus has had respect for that, baptism he obedient he showed his obedience to that baptism he received took the baptism from john and today we need to take baptism if you believe that you're a child of the living god if you are the follower if you are the christian peter reminds us that we need to take baptism the first thing we need to do is we need to repent not only we repent of our sins, we need to repent and we need to believe. Believe that God sent his son Jesus into this world. And Jesus died for our sins on the cross. And then that we have this baptism that we would be able to come and take, receive the baptism. Today I'm asking you, what is holding you back? Have you taken a baptism? What is holding you back? If you're serious about this eternal life, if you're serious about the new purpose, if you're serious about what God wanted to give to you, if you're serious about what God wished to offer it to you, it is a requirement. It is, it is something that qualifies us to into the family of God. We have, when we receive baptism, when we repent, when we believe, when we have received this baptism, we are called into a new family. We are calling to a new family of God. We, a new family is possible. Your physical family or the immediate family 
um, maybe perfect, maybe not be perfect, but God calls us into his family. Not only he invites us to his family, but we have a new identity. We have a new purpose. We have a new authority. God gives to each one of us and we have a new identity. Because you have become the child of the living God and then God gives us a new community. God gives us a new community for us to grow. God gives us a new community as a supporting system. It gives us a new community for us to mature, to have these accountability partners, for us to help us to grow. Get a new power. God will enable us to access this eternal power. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that God gives to each one of us. When we repent, when we believe, when we receive baptism, we get new power. We have a new family. We have a new identity. We have the new community. In the new power, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us and is living his life in and through our lives. The life of God flows in and through our lives. The presence of God flows in and through our lives. The intelligence of God flows in and through our lives. The wisdom of God flows in through our lives. The abundance flows in and through our lives. As God, if you come and position yourselves, if you were to submit to God, if you were to surrender yourself to God, your life would become like a tuning fork. Your life would become like an instrument. Your life will become like a channel. Because God's blessings will flow into you and through you. God wanted to reach the world through your life. God wanted to touch the world through your life. God wanted to use your skill set. God wanted to use your expertise. God wanted to use the temperament. Whatever God gave you, he wanted to use them so that you could become an instrument for God. So that you could become a channel for God because God's life flows in and through our lives 24 7. When you wake up in the morning, you're all excited because you're alive. When you're alive, it means God is still thinking about you. God is still expecting us to live a life that is pleasing to him. And God desires to do something great and significant things in our lives. Becoming a Christian is a very simple process. It's not a, a complicated process at all. All we have to do is to recognize that we are all sinners. The Bible says that we must confess our sins. What does confession mean? Agreeing with God that you are messed up. Agreeing with God that you are not good enough to be able to receive God's goodness of God. When we confess our sins to the Lord, and then the next thing that we do is to repent. That Peter gives us a very clear description of how we need to repent. Repent. Repenting meaning turning away from the wall and turning towards God. And after we repent, we must believe in God. We must believe that God has sent his son Jesus Christ into our, into our lives. We must also believe that Jesus shed his precious blood for us on the cross. And the Bible says there is power in the name of the Lord. There is power in the blood of the Lord. In fact, the blood can cleanse us. In Isaiah chapter 53, we would read that, that by, we are being healed by the stripes of the Lord. We've been healed, the Bible says. God is interested to heal our bodies. Did you know that? Maybe you have been experiencing physical challenges. Maybe you've been experiencing medical challenges. Maybe you've been experiencing health issues. Jesus is the answer to them. The Bible reminds us becoming a child of God is simple. We need to confess. We need to repent. We need to believe and get receive the baptism. Baptism is a public declaration that you identify yourself. It is a public declaration to say that you are the witnesses, you have been the testimony follower of the Lord. And today I see very many people from many churches, many countries, from many cities, and we think, what can we do to attain? What can we do to receive God's eternal life?
the Paul, Peter gives us his first sermon. Peter's first sermon talks about we need to receive baptism. And baptism is such a thing that is a simple thing that we need to committing our lives to the Lord. And it is Christian life is also like a dual partnership. A dual partnership meaning when you hear the gospel, when you believe, when you repent, when you get baptized, and when you serve the Lord faithfully, then you are doing your part. As you do your part, then God would do his part, and God would be able to work in and through our lives when we show our obedience to the Lord, when we are able to follow the commands of God on a regular basis, then God would do his part. There is no such thing as a solo Christian. There is no such thing as a living out your own life or do everything on your own. Rather, we need the help of God. We need the help of the new community that God can work in and through our lives. New Testament church was a model of how we can able to be part of this new community. And especially today, we have several options to choose from. And God wants us to release his power God wanted to give his very best to his children. And again, I wanted to give you an illustration. God is still interested in our lives. He's still interested to show up when we are really looking for God. There was this man called Sadhu Sundar Singh. And again, uh, due to his background, due to his uh, nature, due to his community, people were thrown him in a dungeon. People have thrown him in a dungeon. And they get no support, no help, no friends, no resources. He was unable to come up. And then all he did was he was able to kneel, knelt, and he was praying. And he was praying. He, as he opened his eyes, he saw a rope was dropped right in front of him. He was unable to comprehend. He was trying to call out. Nobody could respond. But he saw a rope was hanging. So he took the rope and came up. And after coming up, he wanted to express his gratitude. He wanted to thank the people who dropped that rope. But there was nobody there. There was nobody. And then the Sadhu Sundar Singh writes in his testimony that God was interested. It was Jesus who dropped that rope. When times get difficult, when times are challenging, when times are hard, if you don't know where to turn, turning to the person of Jesus makes us help. It does help. Especially as Christians, when we try to, to serve the Lord. In the Joshua chapter 3, the Bible verse reminds us, and the God gives a command to the children of Israel and says, Today you consecrate yourself today. He says, you consecrate yourself today, or set aside a day today, you fast today, you pray today, you intercede today. And the Lord said, as you do today, as you set aside, as you consecrate yourself today. And the Lord says, tomorrow I will do amazing thing. Tomorrow I will do my amazing thing. So what is what, what the scripture is recommending what the scripture is saying to all of us is today we need to set our house in order. Today we need to seek the Lord. Today we need to repent. Today we need to confess. Today we need to believe. Today we need to take baptism. And then as we do our part, the Lord would do his part. And the, the promise goes like this. If you were to do today the things that are required to do, and the Lord would do his part. I will do amazing things. The Lord's measure is big, is gracious, is generous. The Lord is promising to all of us, if we were to follow his word, if we were to follow his commands, if we were to read the word on a regular basis, the Lord promises that he wanted to do amazing things, amazing things in your personal life, amazing things in your family life, amazing things in the kids' life, kids' lives life and their uh, careers, amazing things that happen through whatever. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you've been experiencing. But I do have this good news. The good news is Peter is preaching his first sermon. He was courageous. 
He was bold. He was witnessing. He was outside. There were 3,000 people were added to the congregation. 3,000 people responded to God's word. And today as I preach, today as I speak, today as I invite, if you were to respond, if you were to, to show obedience, if you were to say yes to God's word, and God would be able to use you. God would be able to express his favor on you and your family. And again, as we are here every week, we wanted to be a service to you. We wanted to pray with you. We wanted to pray for you. We wanted to intercede on your behalf and we wanted to celebrate life together. I recognize life is not easy. I recognize life is is hard, is difficult and challenging, but the Lord promises to be with us. The Lord promises to take us through. The Lord promises to, to a safe arrival. As I wrap this, as I wrap up our service today, I don't know what type of gifts that God has given to you. If God has given you the gift of speaking, gift of preaching, gift of teaching, Maybe computer engineering, maybe computing, maybe carpentry, maybe you're singing, maybe a desk a job, maybe at home, whatever it may be. God has specially packed you in with the temperament, with the skill set, expertise, and the talents. If you were to say yes to the Lord, the Lord will use those talents so that his life can flow in and through you. His presence can flow in and through you. His wisdom can flow in and through you. Whatever you're facing, financial difficulties, relationship issues, medical issues, health issues, uncertainty, tiredness, experience fatigue, God, he says, come unto me, I'll give you rest. I know I'm speaking to you. I know you've been experiencing life in very difficult and challenging times. But Jesus is saying, come unto me, I'll give you rest. Let me pray for you. Please close your eyes. Father, I thank you, God, for today. Thank you, God, for reminding us once again that Jesus Christ is alive and he's interested to meet every need. Thank you, God, for the story and the life of Peter. Lord, he's reminded us that we need to confess. He reminded us that we need to repent. He reminded us that we need to believe. He reminded us that we need to take baptism. Lord, as we show our obedience to you, as we learn to grow and mature in our walk with you. May you be visible, meet all of our needs, undertake for us, provide for us, sustain us, take us through these difficult and challenging times. We thank you, God, for what you have in store for us. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you.
Hello, here are some announcements. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us for our weekly services. It is our pleasure to do life with you week after week as we continue to dive into God's word and worship him through song and prayer. Your prayer requests are important to us so that we can pray with you as you encourage us as well. We would love to hear from you via email. Next, I would like to also invite you to partner with us through your gifts and offerings. All gifts and offerings are tax deductible. The link to submit those is listed below. We thank you for your partnership. Finally, check out our website and please share it with your family and friends. We would love to continue to build each other up week after week. Have a blessed week. Stay safe until we see you next time. Thank you. Hey, it's Samantha. I hope you are enjoying our weekly services. We are here to serve and empower you and your family week after week. I would like to invite you to become a global partner with Mosaic today. Together, we can take the gospel to the nations. Jesus is in the business of changing and transforming lives, and he is counting on us to complete his very unique task. Want to invest in the faith of the next generation? Global partners are needed to help support this ministry by committing to $100 per month. Remember, there is one life to live, one life to serve, and one life to give. So please visit our website and sign up to become a global partner today. Thank you. Hey, this is David. I'm so glad you're able to join our service today. We always have a tradition here. We always wrap our service with the Lord's Prayer and the benediction. Again, the Lord invites us to recite the Lord's Prayer. I don't know where you're listening to this program or watching this program or at any social media platforms. God's Word transcends. When we pray, God's Word and His blessings transcend time and space in all locations. And if you're sitting on a chair, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on a couch, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on the floor, I I'd invite you to please stand. Because we wanted to recite this prayer. That one day Jesus' disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, please teach us to pray. And Jesus taught them this prayer. So let's recite this prayer in unison. Unison meaning no matter what languages that you speak to you, you just say it in your own language. We, the Lord understands all of them. Please close your eyes and repeat the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and to keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, gracious unto you, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for staying. I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Until then, may God's best be yours. Shalom and peace. Stay safe. This program is made possible by gifts from viewers like you. Thank you. Please check us out on social media. Check out our website and please share it with your family and friends. Thank you for choosing to tune into our program. May God's best be yours. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.